Today we are going to build not one, but two RAM expansions for the C64. And these are pretty cheap to make. They are called NeoRAM, which is a remix version of the so-called GeoRAM, which was created after Commodore decided to stop manufacturing its own RAM expansion units. And the company that did Geos for the C64 also created a RAM expansion, which is called GeoRAM. And this Neo RAM and this Neo RAM Remix are variants of that. And I ordered quite a bunch of PCBs here. Um, I got 11 of these. And the nice thing about these is that you can either do what I did here, which is the very smallest version with 512 um, kilobytes of RAM and just some um, LS logic and a reset switch. Or you can go full featured and do a two megabyte RAM expansion with a um, battery, which can then store all the stuff in memory for an almost indefinite time. So you can uh, use Neo Drive, which is a software which can um, load stuff into this memory and you can use it as a big disk drive or hard disk almost. And you can store all kinds of stuff in here. So. That is pretty neat. It's pretty easy to build. And I will do two versions, the small version and a bigger version with one Mac. I, I don't want to do four of these chips. They are um, surface mount and you can see I'm not the greatest surface mount solderer. So let's get started on, on a fresh one. We'll do the simple one first without all the stuff around here, which has 512 um, K of memory. And then we will do the full-fledged one with all the logic which we need to, um, to address the battery up here. Okay, so let's get started. So before we get started on Soldering this, let me quickly tell you what you need. You will need at least, um, as you can see here, let's put, me, let's put this here, you will need a 74HCT273, you will need a 74HT174, and you will need a 74HCT138, two times, um, plus some, ca um, some caps, no, it's just one cap, um, a few tantalums um, up here. So if you're using more RAM chips, you have to use more tantalums. You can do a reset switch, you don't have to. And you can do um, all these CR battery holders, which go here. And then you can use this and you need two diodes, uh, Schotsky diodes and a few resistors. And that is pretty much it. And on the back side, you have to configure which version of this are you you are building if you're using all the ram um, and if you are not using the batteries and you have to um, bridge this jumper yeah so for the smallest version i have all the components here and you can see there's is a board there's one of these ram chips a few sockets um, the ic's needed minus this one i only have one of these right now so that will go from here to here one diode and one tantalum and one reset switch because why not this this is not the correct reset switch you should use the angled reset switch so that goes back here don't have one so you can simply solder this like I did here and cut two legs and you have a reset switch which is not too rigid but it works. Okay so that should uh, go reasonably fast. These don't have polarity so you just put it in here like that. Twist the legs. That one has a polarity and it's pretty easy. You can see this has a little silver line on top and the line goes where the line goes. You have to populate D2 and the line is up here. So we are just going to um, bend this like this. 
so the silver line is on top and we put the, the leg with the silver line where this line goes there's a little line it's a diode sign and if you populate the whole board you have to turn the other one around because uh, there the line is down and you just bend the legs and you're good to go here and then you do the sockets quickly check which one goes where these legs straight looks like it yeah what i like to do by, with these cheap sockets is just bend a few of these legs and then they stay in place so now i will do all the population of sockets right now um, I will do all the sockets and these parts and then we just have to solder on the RAM and the switch and put in the ICs. And at the end of the video I will also show you what you can do with this. That's probably the most important and interesting part for most of you. What can you do with a certain $13, 13 dollars um, RAM expansion and this is actually in the configuration I'm doing now is $13 uh, which is 5 for the board 4 for one of these RAM chips so if you have 4 you have 16 euros for these um, few sockets which are let's say a euro and some LS chips will which come to around 3 um, euros or dollars so you are pretty much in for about 12 to 13 dollars and if you order from China you are even way cheaper you can do this for I guess six dollars so that's pretty nice and uh, I like that and I like to do affordable projects um, only thing is you have to order ten or at least five of these boards I got mine from PCB way and um, they are not affiliated with this channel or this is not the sponsoring I paid for these and the most expensive part of that was shipping there's 40 40 euros or so so that brings the price of the board a bit up because the boards themselves were free I had a coupon New Year's coupon but uh, yeah yeah so this is pretty much how you populate this just make sure that you put the silver line on top and the leg on top too and yeah let's solder this in and then we do the rest Okay, so I'm using the flat tip again, like in the last build. And you just put the tip on the pad and the component, and then you give some solder to it so that the solder can flow into it. And it's really important to heat the pad because then you get these nice solder points, else you get just these blobs. You don't want blobs. Okay, just snip off these legs. And oh, that socket got a little crooked. But that's not a problem. It's all connected, all is good. Always make sure to check if uh, there are no bridges between these solder points. Yeah, and that is pretty much it. Now we have to solder on, or could solder on, you don't have to the reset switch and for that I will just put some solder on the tip here of course use the right one don't have one so I will do it like that and then you can go and snip off these legs if you're using one of these you should of course use the angled one like that okay so let's get to the fun part which is soldering the surface mount stuff and for that it is totally important 
to use some flux. I use a Q-tip, which is not ideal, but I don't have any other means of putting this on there. And what you will do is you go and you put it on the pads. Be generous so that it can really take the solder. And then you go and with a clean tip, you go and remove the um, flux from the top pads so that solder won't bridge over. And then all you have to do is to put this chip on there like that. So the, the writing, if you have the reset switch on top, is correct so that you can read it. The 5S1 faces down and you put the pads on the pads. Make sure that you put the right pad on the right pad like this and then at least I do it like this. You go, push down, make sure that you don't move it. And you just put some stuff on there to make it stick. And now you go and do the same. My way of doing this is that I um, put some solder on, this, on the tip, just a little, so a little blob, and then I go and I go from top to bottom just like brushing teeth and that way you can see it makes pretty good contact and it looks nice so there are pretty little um, room for bridging and as you can see looks even better than the first time I did this, let's take magnifier and check. Yeah, that looks great. Seems like there are no bridges. Every pin is connected. Nice. And then you turn it around and do the other side. I highly, highly recommend doing it, doing it like this, even at an angle, not flat, because if you do it flat, it's uh, much more easy to bridge stuff and then again you go and from up and down up and down and every five to six pins you put on a little bit more solder and do the same make sure not to bridge any pads on the other side you can put solder on there but don't bridge them okay let's take a quick look no bridges looks good now we have to do two things. The first is, since we are building the cheapo version without a battery or anything, we have to bridge jumper number five. So this is SJ5. You just put some solder on there and bridge these two pads like this. And the second thing is that we have to um, rewire these two jumpers. They are now, let me show you a little closer. They are now bridged on position one and two, which is uh, position one is where this little arrow is. So if you turn it around, you can see it better. So one and two are bridged. Now we have to cut the trace between these and we have to bridge two and three because we only have one of these chips. And um, I will leave a link to this side, but you can see it here, um, where you can see which um, jumper settings you have to use if you are using uh, more of these RAM chips or less. If you're using the Full configuration, you don't have to do anything back here. It's all like it is, just leave it. But we have to cut two traces. And that is for S3 and S4. I will quickly do this and show you. And you can take an X-Acto knife and just cut this little thing here. And if you did, make sure that there's no continuity. So you take your multimeter put it in continuity mode and you test between these two pins here and there's no continuity right now and same here. So now we're going to put solder over these two pads and over these two pads and then we have the configuration for 512K like that. So there's our solder bridge. 
Now it's time to put in the um, the ICs, and you put the one thirty-eight down here. So you may have to bend these a little. Make sure it's in there for good. You put two of these in the bottom sockets. And then the tall one goes in the top socket. Don't have one of these fancy chip leg uh, benders. So make sure that the notch faces left in this case. That's in. And then the final one would be this one, which goes right here. And we have two of these. Let me show how you use these. And I will um, take this one the second one, I just soldered, and we'll put on um, another one of these chips. We'll do a configuration for one Mac, because I don't see any need for two megabyte extension of the C64. Um, we will re rewire this back here to do a one megabyte version, and we'll put in all the other stuff. So let's quickly give this a test, and uh, then we will do the rest. So this is NeoTunes, and it uses the NeoRam to load 512k of SID music. And you can use your joystick to select which song you want to hear. And as you can see, it's there immediately. That takes quite a while to load, some minutes actually. And I'm using the Pi 1541 in 1581 mode, so it's one large disk image. That's pretty impressive. So I'm using the smallest version of the NeoRAM here, which is with just one memory chip. It works flawlessly. This is really great to see. There's some real classics here. Putting a link in the description below if you want to download new tunes. So here's another one. This is Maniac Mansion and it also uses a NeoRAM and loads all the data of the game into memory so you have no load times during the game. It takes a while to load. You can see it's loading side one right now and the progress bar is going really slow. Yeah, so there are quite a few games optimized for NeoRAM. Sonic isn't right now, but I'm pretty sure that it will be shortly, so if you are planning on playing Sonic on the C64, build yourself a NeoRAM and I'm pretty sure it's done when you are done with building your NeoRAM. So next up we are going to take this unit, which we just built, and turn it into the, let's call it the premium unit. We will populate all the stuff that is not on here right now, and we'll turn it into a one megabyte RAM expansion with a battery so that you can store stuff in here and use it like kind of a hard disk. So to do this we have to use some more components and we already have one of these Schotsky diodes up here and what we're going to do is we put in another one of these and we bend again on the silver stripe and we put that in here. Make sure that that silver stripe leg goes in where the square is right here. So I'll put it in here, twist the legs a little to keep it in place, and that is that. Then we have one of these uh, caps, and they have polarity, and you can see that there's a little plus sign, and that plus sign has to go in the plus where the plus sign is here. So put it in like, like this. Again, twist the legs a little and that is in there. Then we have three resistors. All of these resistors have no polarity, so you just plug them in the way you like. You can see there's one smaller and one bigger circle here. The bigger circle usually is to put these um, like this and not like this. So put that leg with a resistor part on it like this, but the bigger circle is, but it doesn't matter. So you can pull, put this any way you want. And then we have a 1K resistor, which goes to R2. 
same thing, pre-bend, put in twist legs, all good. And we have a third one, which is a 20K resistor, which goes in like this. So that's our resistors. Then we have a transistor, which goes in between these resistors. And you just put it in just like it's on the silk screen here, like that. And you have to bend the middle leg a little out. And you put it in like this. And push down until it doesn't get any further. And then you're good to go. Twist the legs. Okay, so that is pretty much all the logic there is. We also have to put another uh, one of these um, tantalums right here. So let me grab another one of these. And these have no polarity, so you can put them in any way you like. And again, twist the leg. Good to go. So all that's left is to put in the battery holder to rewire this up here uh, and to put in a second memory chip. So let's solder these components and then we are good to go. So if legs are in the way, just cut them. Nice, so these are the components. Now let's do the uh, battery clip and that goes just like on the silk screen. Plus has this square part and I will just do my single-handed soldering trick. Putting some solder on here and trying to keep this in place. Can of course also use some tape as our compartment. Nice, we just need a battery for that. Um, which leaves us with some soldering on the back side. First we have to remove that J5 because now we have a clock or a battery. So we go and remove that solder bridge. So there should be no continuity betwe between these two points. We will check this in a minute. And for the one megabyte version, we have to bridge um, J3 on the one and two, which we just cut, and the J4 stays like it is. So we remove this bridge and put in this bridge again, like this. That's all there is to it. Now it's configured to use the battery and be one megabyte, and we have to put on the memory, of course. So I have some um, solder on the pin pads here. I will remove that because it's much harder to solder like that just by scrapping over it. It will be interesting to see how to solder in between these chips here. Good, same procedure as before. We take some flux and put it on here and then we go and put on another one of these chips. So same procedure, the writing goes this way, 5S1 should be below, and we put on the chip in the right, right spot, and this stays in place for a second, but not much longer. Put some solder on the tip, and go and fix it, like that. Okay, so now let's do the soldering part of this. So the first row went exceptionally well. So if you use more of this flux, it gets much, much easier. So do this, that went really fast and it does look really good. Okay, on to the second half of that. And now there's a tricky part because we have some pins above, so I need a very steady hand for that. I'm just going over these pins. It's best to just touch it because the solder or the flux will take the solder immediately. If you stay too long, then bridging happens. And if it does, use a flat tip 
and try to move the solder away from the chip. That way it gets divided again. Okay, I would say that is it. Yeah, so putting a battery in here and then there's a one megabyte RAM expansion for the C64. Nice, and of course putting this chip in here, from here, you have to populate this. Um, yeah, that went pretty well and it's a pretty easy to do thing if you are up for the surface mount component soldering. And um, I like it. I put all the links in the description below and uh, build one yourself. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and I will help if I can. Thanks for watching and uh, until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.